Hi, happy Friday. It's great to have Bobby still in the UK um, for our chat today. And I think you're going to love this one because it's all about um, making the most of peak performance on a daily basis. How to keep your passion alive for what you do. Over to you. Well, I think that's a really powerful question, especially summing up the end ceremony for the Paralympics mm -hmm. yesterday, where this whole city seems to be alive right now with a sense of excitement, but that's not the norm, is it? I mean, I heard a stat recently, don't know how true it is, but in most of the Western world, the greatest amount of heart attacks are from seven o'clock to nine o'clock on a Monday morning. It's when people wake up and they realize that they've got to spend minimum another 40 hours doing something that they hate and going to a place they hate doing it with people who they can't stand to be around. And so they get into their car and they're literally dying to get to work in the morning. And it's really sad, but that's not what starts us off, not in this industry. Mm. I mean, very few people in this industry got started because their father and grandfather and great-great-grandfather had a heritage of group exercise. Yeah, quite. You know, we got into this industry because we were uniquely passionate. And sometimes we get into the mode of just getting it done. Mm. So what does spark that passion? I think there's three primary things that keep us in a passionate state that we've done either by default or by design at one point in our lives, Jane. And just as a matter of being in the thick of it, we lose, we lose that mindset. Number one is focus. When we first got into this industry, we were really clear, and this might resonate with a lot of you, about what it is we wanted to do and why we wanted to do it. If you listen yeah. to a lot of people's stories, it's very inspiring about what personally got them into fitness. And we thought about that. We obsessed about it. We talked about it. We didn't know where the borders of work and play began and ended. And I think now we, we ask ourselves the question, what? What do I got to do? You know, what credentials do I need to keep up? Oh, what conferences am I going to have to get to this year? And the question we miss is why? What is quintessentially the most important, exciting, empowering thing about what I don't have to do but get to do on a daily basis? Number two is rituals. Mm -hmm. You know, we all remember going to a conference and listening to a speaker. Maybe it was, you know, a workshop or something he or she said. And that just resonated so deeply with us. Or for some people, it's, you know, we would ride our bikes to work every morning and listen to music. So by the time we walked into the room, we were just completely inspired. And now we just get on with it. Mm -hmm. So I think the second thing is understanding what our rituals are. And the third thing is excellence. I think when we're really good, freakishly good at what it is we do, rather than what other people tell us we should be doing yeah, that's and letting cool. people should all over us because <laughs> they project their expectations into our life. And I think when we ask ourselves the question, number one, what is it? Looking back in retrospect, that was redundant, wasn't it? But in retrospect, what was the one skill or the one attribute that I could credit to my success thus far in the industry? And in the next six months, what one other attribute or talent or skill, if I developed it or acquired it, would account for my greatest success in the next two years in this industry? Yeah. And then what do I need to do daily? How do I need to dive in um, to my work on a, on, a, on a daily basis or at least on a weekly basis, I would say, you know, what you do daily, because what you do daily determines who you become permanently. And what's yeah. my plan for doing that? Mark Verstegen said something that was brilliant uh, a couple of years ago at a PTA Global me um, Mentorship, actually. He said, find the fundamentals. What are the fundamentals of your business? Mm -hmm. You know, it's not about doing 10 things kind of good. Yeah. So it's about doing the fundamentals, in his words, savagely well and that resonates with Thomas Plummer arguably one of the top business gurus in the fitness industry and he said identify three emerging trends I think we talked about this in your field or your sector of fitness then take one of them and become legendary at it yeah and that's the key you know uh, T.S. Eliot one of my favorite quotes is in the end of all our exploring 
is to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. And I think at the end of all our exploring, sometimes one or two things can happen. We could either get lost just doing a job, and yeah. job is an acronym for just over broke, because people mm -hmm. who work a job are just over broke. I'm not just talking about financially, I'm talking about spiritually, yeah. emotionally for the rest of our lives. Or we can use that retrospect to still be ignited by the same things that sparked our passions in the beginning, but have so much more experience on how to employ those talents, on how to employ those skill sets in a way that produces an optimal result, not only for us, but for our clients. And by indirect method, lifting other people up is the only way we elevate ourselves in our career. Mm. I mean, I bet every one of you listening to this can, can, can see um, a transition from where you walked in passionate about what you do to the day that you walk in doing the same thing again. And as much as you love it, the passion is slightly gone. So I think, you know, this is all about as well, creating new opportunities out of doing the same thing. You can do the same thing better. You can do the same thing differently. And you can do it with a new face on it. You can change the face of what you do mm -hmm. to keep the passion alive and to keep your momentum going. Really, it's when you do the same thing over and over and over again that it inevitably dies. Yep, so three things. What are we focusing on every single day? And consequentially, what are we not focusing on? Yeah. What are our rituals? Do we just rock up to class and just get through it? Or what do we do to put ourselves in a state of peak performance? Emotion drives our thoughts. More so than thought even drives our emotion yeah. if you look at neuroanatomy. And the third thing is what is the one quintessential thing or skill or talent that if we were to become savagely good at, it would account for our greatest successes, our greatest wins for ourselves, our clients, our, our class participants. And what is it that we're doing daily to develop a higher level of capability in yeah. that one area? What you do daily yeah. is who you become permanently. So focus, rituals, personal development, mm. one area every day. Brilliant. There's a show on TV I don't know whether any of you have seen it. It's called The X Factor. And, and you know, it's this show is one of the most po popular shows ever. And you instructors kind of have it. Mm -hmm. And I think often your softest skills are the ones that you're not um, focusing on and, 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 and improving. And, you know, your ritual should be about you getting your passion back sparking your enthusiasm for what you do which you do for me on a regular basis you know just by these chats well thank you jane as she's on. you do for me as well <laughs> and by so, so, well let's not even get into all some of our chats yeah some of them are oh don't know i've still got a headache so <laughs> um thank you for coming today i hope you enjoyed it let us know your thoughts i really think we're hitting the mark at the moment and um have a good friday Bye-bye.